Hey crew, welcome to the Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi, your local light worker. Welcome to a general tarot check-in regarding the energies that exist at the moment in the collective between the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine. We have been having a really harsh week. I feel that there are such powerful collective forces trying to create a chasm between what is masculine and what is feminine. It's almost like the the two genders cannot come together anymore. There is a block, a heavy, massive block to any form of union, peacefulness and comprehension. We are being made to feel like we are in a war against each other, like there is a gender war out there. So that's why I wanted with an open heart and a clear mind to focus my energy and put it in your service so that I may be able to see what messages can I glimpse at the moment related to the state of the Divine Feminine and the state of the Divine Masculine? How can they create a dialogue? Is there form or shape for forgiveness, reparation? Can the two sides that seem so opposite and so far apart come together in what seems to be a landscape of increasing loneliness, isolation and separation? So let's see what's going on at the moment. This reading is timeless. It is meant for you to hear whenever you stumble upon this message. And it is for those of you who have somebody on your mind and you find yourself in a spiritual connection with somebody. Now, all this being said, let's begin. Let's find out what are the energies between the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine at the moment. Page of Wands, Ace of Wands, Seven of Swords. Okay. What is healing between the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine? A sense of wilderness feeling wild. Okay. What role does the Divine Feminine adopt in this situation? And what role does the Divine Masculine adopt in this situation? <laughs> How beautiful Okay, who is watching over the Divine Feminine? Which Goddess is watching over the Divine Feminine? Which Goddess is watching over the Divine Feminine? <laughs> Pele. Which God is watching over the Divine Masculine? Which God? Wow, that was right off the bat. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Okay, I think that we have enough cards for the time being. I am going to zoom in a little bit on these cards so that you may be able to see them a little bit up close and with more clarity. So we begin our reading with the page of cup, uh, sorry, page of wands. For some reason, there is some sort of cups interferences. Something that has been emotional for a very long period of time is now going to be manifested into action. And we see with a lot of clarity, although, yes, there we go. We see here very clearly that there is um, a bold new beginning, a forceful beginning. Um, you, somebody could even say a little bit of a violent beginning towards a new direction, more movement in relationships. I feel that the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine both are discovering with more clarity what it is that they want. And they are going to embody this fire. There has been a lot of anger. And I feel that this anger will be used constructively 
to not go gently into that cruel night. So there is a plan of action that is being formed, although the energy tends to be a little bit scattered. There is a lack of focus and there is um, impulsiveness at hand between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. It's kind of like they're both incredibly excited to push forward with a plan, but they don't know exactly what steps to take for their plan to be successful. They just know that they have this drive to get out of bed and stop suffering and let bygones be bygones. And all of a sudden, it's like they wake up from a very long, heavy slumber and they think that enough is enough. I am still alive. I am vital. I still have desire within myself and I'm going to use this. I'm going to channel it into creating a better situation in my love life. I'm going to regain my confidence. I am going to push forward, come what may. So fierce determination. It's almost like they are both um, putting on their suit and uh, kind of um, creating the field in front of them. I don't want to say it like they're like, <laughs> but this is the image that is coming to mind. It's almost like they're soldiers, you know, uh, putting on their war paint and getting on their suits and they're kind of scouring the field, looking for what potential dangers may lie ahead. But they both know that they want to take more risks because they understood that lying dormant, being weak and cowardly and hiding in a corner, living in isolation is a form of death while alive. Uh, a sort of state of being a zombie, a liminal in between that is sucking out of their life force. So it is better to step into danger, step into a zone of conflict, risk a little bit of themselves, but at least they are regaining their vitality. Because there is such a thing as risking and jumping into danger in order to feel like you are alive again, in order to feel that rush of adrenaline, that rush of blood to the head that kind of makes you feel like, hey, I'm still here. It, there's something still vital going on inside of me. I will no longer be able to deny it. So revitalizing themselves. I do see here with the seven of swords, a lack of trust, almost as if both the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine, each in their own way, are expecting the other one to betray them, to steal from them. They are coming at each other with this guarded, militarized, and um, mentally defensive energy. The Seven of Swords is the card of the thief in broad daylight. It's a very, it's a very shameless kind of energy. So seeing it in a reading in which I'm looking at the spiritual energy between divine counterparts, this doesn't bode very well. It's almost like in spite of the best efforts, they are still kind of falling into this collective energy of strike first before I am being attacked. But they are working with such illusions. There is so much fear between the two of them, but this fear is created by their own mindset. In order to overcome the fear, in order to overcome this feeling of, I need to protect myself from a danger, I don't even know if the danger is actually real, but I need to protect myself anyway. So in order to let go of this paranoia, they need to change their mindset. And it's going to require effort to change a very deeply ingrained mindset in which they see the other person not as a continuation of themselves, but as the enemy. So this brings me to the next question that I asked. What is healing in this connection? And it is a feeling of wilderness, a rewilding of each other. On one hand, there is this revitalization that can be easily transformed into destructive anger into both sides deciding to attack and destroy one another going to war with each other right this red energy aries energy it's the north node in aries in the year of the dragon um so we do see these energies very strongly represented here 
But at the same time, as there is this drive to kind of destroy each other, there is also this drive to couple up with each other, to no longer live separated one from the other. The isolation has created this big misunderstanding, has created this illusion of separation, when in reality, they are continuations of the same face of God. Both the masculine and the feminine exist because we need each other exists because we are parts of the same experience of being human together we create life but it seems like at the moment both sides are intent on separating from one another which is leading them to misunderstand each other which is leading them to destroy one another they have to understand that they are one and if you destroy the other part you destroy yourself there cannot be one without the other and this is the aspect that needs to be healed. We have been kept in this over-rationalized, overly controlled form of social relating in which everything is being censored, everything is being somehow put into a box, regimented. And now what needs to heal between the two sides in order for them to find this force of life rather than force of death and destruction is they need to reclaim their rebellious side and instead of reclaim instead of fighting against one another they need to come to life hold hands and attack the powers that be attack the structures that have placed them in this position of thinking that they are at war with each other when in reality they're not it's just an illusion that they bought into because they allowed themselves to be compartmentalized by external forces such as social regimes, corporate regimes, rules and regulations in society that have been a bit too stringent, that have been a bit too censoring. There is here a need to kind of rebel, rebel against what is against life, rebel against what is against union, not against each other reclaiming this wild part of themselves, this part that would allow them to have fun with one another, to give each other pleasure rather than take each other down and destroy one another. So a fire energy that can be used constructively rather than destructively. But this will come about in time with the slow release of this passionate, vibrant, fire, red, Aries energy. And speaking of fire energy, we see here that the Divine Feminine at the moment carries the role of the Rescuer. She appears as a modern garden rose. And we see as well that the Divine Masculine carries the role of the Citizen. And uh, he appears as a modern garden rose too. So... They are not at all caught up in the whims of the past. In spite of this falling back into traditionalism, which usually tends to happen during moments of intense social progress, they are the people that will usher in progressive ideas in society. The fact that people have progressive lifestyles and progressive definitions of the self should not threaten the divine feminine and the divine masculine energy, but on the contrary, allow it to exist in all of its multiplicities. In all of the ways and shapes in which it chooses to be stylized and embodied in reality. As you know, both men and women carry divine feminine and divine masculine energies inside of themselves. They carry collective archetypes related to the animus and the anima. We both have this inside of ourselves. It is expressed physically in the left side of the body, which is feminine, and the right side of the body, which is masculine. So, again, as I said, if these two sides decide to go to war with each other, this only speaks about a deeply ingrained inner conflict that each and every one of us has inside of ourselves, which is then amplified at a collective level. But if these two sides recognize each other for what they really are, which is the same, they are both one, one cannot exist without the other, then there's 
space here for reparation. There is space here for them to use their feisty, fiery energies not to attack each other and create this power play of domination and submission, but to understand that they are both these types of feisty, fiery forces. They both have the instinct to survive. They both have the creative zest for life and excitement to bring life into this reality they both want to give each other pleasure and experience pleasure we have the divine feminine in this powerful goddess-like energy of the hawaiian goddess pele the one that is able to propel the fire from the volcano to harness it for ultimate destruction but also for ultimate creation because the ground that has been touched by the lava and the ashes of a volcano eruption becomes more fertile in time. And it is necessary from time to time to have these volcanic eruptions in order to restore balance. And we see as well, divine masculine energy is represented by the Greek hero Achilles, who was like a template of courage and confidence, the first to jump into battle. He was restless, like incredibly energetic, dynamic, the hero of all heroes who had just one little weak spot, as we know, with the Achilles' heel. So we see here both of them are feisty and passionate. Both will not give in and submit. Both of them do not even need to be locked into this power play because we see the energy embodied in the feminine exists so powerfully in the masculine. And when they go to war and when they disrespect one another and when they fall back into the confining shackles of tradition instead of progress, which is natural that things should progress, grow and evolve, it is the natural way of things, then that's when destruction happens. That's when they rip apart at the fabric that actually is giving life to both of them. And I see here that unfortunately the Divine Masculine is splitting itself into the many different voices of a lot of other individuals. I see that the Divine Masculine is in this multiplicity energy um, in which I feel like the energy of the Divine Masculine is very hard to put into words, but it's not concentrated. It's shattered into a lot of pieces. And each of these men who come together and join as a group, as some sort of brotherhood, they are actually shattered. Because I see here very strongly that the figments that they represent, if they were to own this energy, each within itself rather than submit it to the responsibility of the group that they choose to be part of, then they would become incredibly brave and vital and they would be able to take control of their own lives. But I see at the moment that the Divine Masculine is shattered in many different versions of itself, almost like it's split, um, like the Hydra, you know, it grows many different heads because it cannot enjoy being itself anymore and splitting itself into this many different versions of itself creating a group that believes it has power over the divine feminine is actually an illusion because we see how the divine feminine is centered she is not split she has not given up on the idea of self-love and self-acceptance while the divine masculine is struggling in spite of the outward confidence there is a lack of focus there is a lack of center there is a lack of purpose why am i splitting myself in this way why have i given up on self-love why am i taking out all of this frustration which is related to a lack of love onto the divine feminine well, because the Divine Feminine is standing strong and we know, all know that those who stand strong and are very aware of themselves, they tend to become projection screens for the self-loathing of other people, the self-anger of other people. So what is the way out of this? How can they both heal? How can they both rewild themselves in a way in which the Divine Masculine is able to stop growing into this Hydra 
is able to refocus the energy and truly stand in this glorious sense of confidence without bothering or trying to dominate or trying to enslave the very centered divine feminine. What is the key? Spirituality and knowing that they are each other's purpose. We lost track as a collective, as a society. We lost track of love. We do not value it. We do not appreciate it anymore. Capitalism has pushed us all into this money-grabbing, competitive hamster wheel that we don't value love. We don't value nurture. We don't value caring. We forgot to believe in the idea that we are each other's soul mirrors, that we belong to one another, that we need each other for spiritual growth in order to feel peaceful and centered and like we are part of this world rather than some sort of aliens that are here just to experience the pain of this world. Believing again in the idea that we are each other's soulmates and wanting the best for each other is what's going to heal us out of this predicament, conflict and resentment. Finding out creative ways in which we can communicate with each other because communication has been so blocked, so censored, so inexistent in some cases. Finding out new ways to speak to each other with respect, with kindness and with creativity. If we do not have a vocabulary to describe the intense changes that the divine masculine and the divine feminine have gone through the incredible speed and progress that they have gone through in the last mere five years, then let's create our own vocabulary. Let's invent new words. Let's be playful with our experiences. So introducing lightheartedness while at the same time believing again and idealizing and romanticizing their connection is going to be what will save us. What would the Divine Masculine say to the Divine Feminine? The Divine Masculine Spirit? Unsatisfied. I wasn't happy with the way things were going. So that's why the backlash. Lack of satisfaction. Yeah. That's why we see the Divine Masculine backlash on the Divine Feminine at the moment. Anything else that they would like to say? Ho, 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 ho. Oh my goodness. Spirit is calling out the Divine Masculine. Ego. I let my pride get in the way of our connection. There we go. Wounded pride. If we're struggling at the moment with Divine Masculines in the collective, it's because they have a big case of a wounded ego. But the ego sometimes needs to be wounded. It needs to break down. It needs to be surrendered in order to be reconstructed into something better than it was. To be phoenixized into something that is more authentic and spiritualized. So bearing this in mind, what would the Divine Feminine say to the Divine Masculine? In the situation, what would the Divine Feminine say to the Divine Masculine? She's very silent. She has a lot of things to say. Time. I'm afraid it's too late to take action. Unfinished business. We still have things to resolve and discuss. Oh boy. She would also say, broken, I feel shattered about this situation. So you see how the Divine Feminine is suffering to see that ego is taking over the heart and soul of the Divine Masculine. And meant, I want to fix our connection. Oh my goodness. And with this, I leave you, my loves, with these two cards, soulmates and meant. Reparation is still at hand. Forgiveness is still possible. Next year, we will be 
collectively obsessed with the energy of Pisces as the north node of the moons are going to move into the sign of Pisces while the south node is going to be in the sign of Virgo. Letting go of control, of being regimented, of needing to compartmentalize our bodies from our hearts, our minds from our bodies, all of that shebang. And finding a way to establish union, feeling creative and messy with each other again, believing that love is possible, that forgiveness is possible, and that un unconditional love can still be materialized. Believing that what was broken this year between the two can be put back together in the future. That will be our salvation. And before I start crying, because I feel like this message, I, I felt it so deeply in my heart. <laughs> it warmed my chest. I hope that you have enjoyed this healing collective check-in. Let me know down in the comments what is your specific situation. Until next time, take care of your beautiful heart. Bye-bye.